This final lecture for this week is going to be a short one. Uh, what we will do in this final lecture is tie up the things that we have introduced. So we introduced this Emery hypothesis testing problem and we were looking for a geometric measure of its difficulty in terms of the distances between distributions. But we this all was motivated from this uh, question about how much information does it, y reveal about x. And so we uh, basically define this quantity conditional entropy, which is the residual uncertainty in a random variable x once some other random variable y is revealed. And we define information as the difference of the original uncertainty h of x minus this residual uncertainty h of x given y. That's mutual information. Uh, but what remains to understand is how is this mutual information related to the original hypothesis testing problem. And this connection between mutual information and hypothesis testing comes through this very famous bound from information theory. Perhaps the most powerful tool that information theory offers, most powerful yet uh, elegantly simple, uh, this Fano's inequality, the so-called Fano's inequality. Um, and what I'll do in this last lecture is, is that I'll present this Fano's inequality without proof. I'll just describe what this inequality does. And later when we uh, study details of measures of information, um, um, as in we will study properties of measures of information next uh, week onwards. Later then I will derive this Fano's inequality. I'll derive various other properties of mutual information and other quantities we have been seeing. All right. So uh, let's begin with Fano's inequality. So this inequality as promised relates the probability of error to probability of error for uh, an Emery hypothesis testing problem under uniform prior. Let's just assume uniform prior to mutual information. Okay, This is mutual information here. Remember that our, we, the unknown is x and given x the, y, uh, the distribution of y is so given x, the distribution of y is this wx, our channel. Okay, So this Fano's inequality says that the probability of error can be bounded below depending on how much the mutual information is. So this probability of error cannot be made zero arbitrarily. It is, so it's at least one minus something. So as long as this something is no, so, so, so when there's something, this this guy here, this term here, when it comes close to 1, then you can make p star to 0. But as long as this thing is smaller than 1, this this probability of error cannot be made small. So what is this thing? This is the mutual information by log of number of hypothesis. This, this remaining small term here is actually the binary entropy function, h of q. And um, you can plot this function as a function of q. It looks like this. And so the maximum value it takes is just one. So you can just imagine that, um, so you can just work with a loser bound. So this one says that P E star can't be made zero, can't be made small, unless I X Y by log M is close to one. So number of hypotheses that you can distinguish log m, log m is approximately mutual information. Okay, So for given m, unless mutual information is large, you cannot make probability of error small. So this is that connection. It relates probability of error to mutual information. Unless mutual information is large, uh, you can't make probability of error uh, small. So once again, the inequality is very simple to state. Probability of error is at least 1 minus mutual information plus 1 by log of number of hypotheses. Okay. For, to be more concrete, if you want the probability of error to be less than one third, some reasonable probability, small, some small probability of error, one by hundred if you like, but one third is good enough for me, then the mutual information must exceed log m. The number of values of x that can be resolved with y are roughly log of that values is roughly mutual information. That's what Fano's inequality says. All right. So. Uh, so, 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 to con so, so remember we saw last time that this mutual information for uniform prior was the average divergence, average distance. And now we are saying as long as if you want the probability of error to be small, then this average distance must be greater than log of number of hypotheses. So earlier we had made a, a guess that the minimum form of some heuristic arguments that you can resolve as many hypotheses M uh, as 
So the log of number of hypothesis m that you can resolve is roughly the minimum distance between wx and wx prime. But what Fano's inequality is telling us is that heuristic is not very precise. Uh, what you can resolve is the average distance to the centroid. Right? That, that's, that's the log of number of hypotheses you can resolve. Okay, so uh, this is the last thing I wanted to say in this uh, this week's lectures. This week, week lectures, uh, I would uh, ask you to go back and try to read there some of the things that I've covered in the class. And in particular, I would like you to remember this Fano's inequality. If there's one thing you must, if there are two things you want to remember from this course, first is the definitions of these quantities, and second is Fano's inequality. Fano's inequality is a uh, is perhaps. Uh, it's a very versatile tool. It gets used in statistics, uh, communication all over the place. And it's perhaps the most powerful thing information theory has to offer. Okay. So, so this uh, brings us almost to the uh, end of this introductory part of the course. So what we have seen in the last five weeks is uh, we have been uh, making some, we have been asking some sort of a high level questions about how do we measure uncertainty? Then how do we measure information? And uh, Consistently, we are seeing that there is a theory which can be used to answer such questions. And the theory starts by a very simple uh, one-line description. Information is reduction in uncertainty. And so first we come up with a measure of information, a measure of uncertainty, which was entropy. And we justified it in various ways. We justified entropy through a compression problem. We justified entropy through a, through a randomness generation problem. And then we came up with mutual information as the change in entropy. Uh, change in entropy. Along the way, we discovered this total variation distance, uh, Kullback library divergence, and then we started connecting things together using this Fano's inequality here that we have stated without proof. Or earlier, we saw Pinsker's inequality, which relates total variation distance to this Kullback library divergence, which came up in slightly different context. So all the characters of, for this course are now set: entropy, mutual information, total variation distance, Kullback library divergence. These are the main characters of this course. And we have also seen the most powerful tools such as Pinsker's inequality and Pano's inequality. Uh, and now what we will do is we will move forward. We'll spend the next uh, few weeks on discussing properties of these measures of information, the ones we have discovered. And uh, we'll derive these inequalities formally and many more formulae, which uh, will be very useful uh, for the rest of the course. So see you next week.